Game Ranks presents 10 facts about the Fallout series that you probably didn't know. The Fallout series is so great, we know you guys love it, so let's crack it open and see what we could find, starting off with number 10. Actor Matthew Perry. Good old Matthew Perry. A lot of you guys probably know him as Chandler from Friends. Well, he's the actor who voices Benny in Fallout New Vegas. How exactly did this go about? Well, apparently he was a huge fan of Fallout 3. He confessed his love for the game during an interview on Ellen DeGeneres' show, and even presented Ellen with a signed copy of the game to give to her as a gift. Apparently, the New Vegas developers noticed this, gave him a call, and asked him to play the character Benny. Like I said, baby, all Benny needs is a stealth boy and a bobby pin. Matthew Perry was really serious about his Fallout addiction. He even confessed that apparently he had to see a doctor about his hands cramping up from playing the game so much. Maybe that's a little hyperbole, but I always knew I liked Chandler the best. At number 9, did you guys know that the Japanese version of Fallout doesn't allow the player to detonate the Megaton Bomb? Yes, that famous quest towards the beginning of Fallout 3, the power of the atom, really is one of the defining moments in the game, but in Japan, it was cut. More interestingly, the nuke launcher weapon, the Fat Man, is not called the Fat Man in the Japanese version. It's got an equally cool name of the Nuka Launcher. This was because Fat Man was actually the name of the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki in 1945, ending World War II. So it kind of makes sense that they changed the name and maybe wanted to avoid some nuke stuff. At number 8, Fallout 3 was actually intended to have more survival gameplay. Bethesda really wanted to capture the feel of surviving in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, as evidenced by keeping yourself healthy in the game and keeping track of your radiation. But they wanted to go deeper than that. In the early stages of developing Fallout 3, Bethesda actually conceptualized surgery minigames. Yes, surgery minigames probably in the same vein as Surgeon Simulator, in which you had to cauterize and patch up bad wounds that your character received out in the wasteland. Maybe it would feel a little bit like Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. That being said though, Bethesda ended up deciding against this because they felt that it killed the pacing of the combat and the gameplay. You already spend a ton of time in the Pip-Boy menus in the game, so I guess Bethesda decided that the last thing you need is to sit in another menu clicking on things. At number 7, Fallout 2 in 1998 was actually the first game to feature same-sex marriages. And that's pretty cool, making Fallout 2 way ahead of its time. And I mean, look at today, most games don't even bat an eye including same-sex relationships or marriages in their games. It's kind of funny though, because in Fallout 2, the charisma score required for marriage was higher for same-sex marriages, and it was even higher for male same-sex marriages than female ones. So, funnily enough, there was still kind of a double standard there. And in Fallout 2, you could do a bunch of stuff to your significant other. You could give a homeless priest some whiskey to get an official divorce. You could also shoot your significant other directly in the face and kill them, or you could do the profitable post-apocalyptic thing and sell them into slavery. Fallout 2's relationships were seriously open-ended and way ahead of their time. At number 6, Fallout 3 initially had trouble releasing in India, and it was actually banned for a while. Fallout 3 is not for sale officially in India due to cultural sensibilities. In the Fallout games, there is a mutated two-headed cow named Brahmin, and in the Hindu religion, cows are worshipped, with Brahmin being the name of a certain breed of cattle in India, and also being of prominent religious significance. It was a pretty tricky thing, and apparently Bethesda didn't want to change the name of their famous irradiated post-apocalyptic cows. So as a result, legitimate buyers of the game in India lost out and couldn't really get the game. Illegal sources are the only place to get the game in India, or you could get it gifted to you on Steam from a friend in the US. It was a shame that during Fallout 3's release, Bethesda didn't just cut the content from the game to sell it in India. At number 5, we have one of the best, most saddest easter eggs ever. In the Fallout New Vegas ad on Lonesome Road, there's a fossilized dog statue that you can stumble upon and pick up and keep in your inventory named Seymour. Seymour is actually an easter egg referencing Fry's dog in the episode Jurassic Bark from Futurama. Yeah, if any of you watch Futurama, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is one of the saddest episodes of a cartoon ever. Do you guys remember that final shot when Seymour lays down and closes his eyes? Oh, it kills me. So it was really nice and charming for them to include this Easter egg in the game, as a nod to Futurama starring character's most faithful pet. At number 4, if you could tell on this list, New Vegas is full of a ton of little quirks. A New Vegas animator actually created a giant gecko lizard nicknamed in the code, Gojira. It would be used to run around and terrorize Camp McCarran in the game. This Gojira was a reskinned and drastically resized version of the fire gecko of the game that towered over anything else in the world. And the Gojira lizard code still exists in the game's assets, so if you're a crafty modder, you can summon that thing. <laughs> At number 3, the Fallout lore is filled with a bunch of different vaults. The vaults, for those of you that don't know, are vault tech establishments that survivors flock to to find sanctuary from the coming nuclear winter. There's so many vaults and each one of them has their own interesting story. One of the funniest ones there is Vault 69. 
a vault populated by one man and 999 women. There's also a counterpart, Vault 68, that's occupied by 999 men and one woman. The purpose of many of these vaults, while there were some that were designed to preserve life, but most of them were there to conduct experiments, such as this weird one. And like I said, there's a bunch of cool vaults that are fun to explore in-game or research and look up to find out what exactly went wrong in these little microcosms of civilization or social experiments. At number two, the dangerously explosive cars from the Fallout games, most notably Fallout 3, are based on the Ford Nucleon, a failed nuclear-powered concept car from the 1950s. You know, those cars that are scattered everywhere in Fallout 3 that have an explosion way bigger than they have any business having. there's so many nuclear powered cars in the Fallout universe is that gas actually retailed for $1,450 a gallon towards the end. Which is why most of the cars you see in the later game are nuclear powered. A nuclear powered car is something I never ever would want to drive around in my life. What a stupid and dangerous idea. No wonder the people in the world in the Fallout universe all died out. And number one, let's talk about what makes the Fallout series tick. Fallout was actually inspired by A Boy and His Dog, a narrative by Harlan Ellison. The games take a lot of other little influences, of course, with a touch of Mad Max. A Boy and His Dog tells the story of a boy and his telepathic dog who work together as a team to survive in the post-apocalyptic wasteland after a huge nuclear war. Sounds familiar? Well, it should. Especially with Fallout 4 and how you can have dog meat as your companion. In 1975, the book was adapted into a movie starring Don Johnson. You can even catch this influence, especially in Fallout 3, did. and it totally explains why John Henry Eden always mentions a boy and his dog in his newscast. So if you ever wanted a little more insight into the creation and influence of the Fallout series, definitely check out a boy and his dog. Whoa, hang on there, folks. We got a bonus fact as well. You know that adorable vault boy that everybody loves who's always given a thumbs up? This is a little bit of a legend and a fan theory, but apparently that thumbs up he's giving actually has to do with safety practices for the nuclear fallout back in the 50s. Back during the Cold War, everyone was paranoid about getting hit with an A-bomb, so students in classes were taught drills to hide in case of a nuclear explosion. Kids were instructed to duck and cover in a prone position with their face down under their desk. And apparently the best judge of safety was extending your arm, putting out a thumbs up, and pointing it at the atomic blast cloud of the explosion. If the explosion was bigger than your thumb, then you were not a safe distance from the explosion and you should probably run. It makes sense and it's kind of cool and clever if you think about it, but honestly, if a nuclear bomb went off anywhere near you that you could see, you should probably run the hell away. So guys, those were 10 facts about the Fallout series that you may not have known. We tried to find some interesting and offbeat little facts and tidbits that have now improved your knowledge of the Fallout series. So now go out and impress someone with your newfound facts. Diehard fans of the series, let us know any interesting facts you have about the Fallout games. We want to know. And if you did have a good time and maybe learned a thing or two, give us a like because it really helps us out. And if you are new, subscribing is the absolute best thing you can do because we do videos every single day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.